How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather SpongeBob Thousand and today we're gonna focus on the probability each area along the East Coast will experience a land falling hurricane. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay content. Make sure to like if you like this video, make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay content. So to begin, let's take a look at the CFS climatology model. And you're probably wondering why am I showing you this? Well, it's because it gives a good idea of how the ridging will will be by the time the hurricane season comes around because and of course the amount of ridging there is in the Atlantic really is a big determinant in where exactly tropical cyclones develop and where exactly they go so take a look at April 2022 how the um, geopotential height anomaly looks like you see that a lot of the northern Atlantic is, is experiencing a much higher pressure than usual which means that there's strong ridging um, throughout the northern atlantic the bermuda high is a bit stronger than average so as a result you um and we pretty much see most of the northern hemisphere in fact seeing um seeing um height anomalies well above average or we're seeing a bit a large amount of ridging over the northern hemisphere and if we were to continue move forward let's move on to june you see that the ridging continues to build throughout the northern hemisphere and more specifically the northern atlantic and what this means is that we're more likely than not going to experience a very strong bermuda high and a very strong ridge located right along the east coast of the united states and what this means is that of course on the southern side of every ridge in the northern hemisphere the wind the lower level winds pretty much come from uh easterly direction so we're gonna see storms pretty much stay further southward than um usual so it, it's unlikely that we're gonna see many storms move straight northward very quickly because of this strong ridging build that's expected to build um right around the hurricane season time frame so as a result i think we should see more storms than usual head further westward which is obviously a much bigger concern because of course that's where the united states is the caribbean islands are located and if we see a lot of storms move west like this then and of course, that significantly raises the chances of a tropical cyclone making landfall somewhere in the United States. So it's definitely something we're going to need to take into consideration. And moving forward to July, you see a strong ridge is still is still remains in the northern atlantic and head into august and september which are the two most active months we do see the ridging weaken a little bit right around the western atlantic and there is maybe that possibility that we could see storms move northward which would definitely be good news however you see that around the eastern half of the united states we see another area where ridging is expected to be stronger than average so we could see storms still move further southward and further westward which would definitely be uh, and obviously be a concern for the united states since a lot of storms would face westward and um impact the united states it, and impacts the united states are far more likely and you see this continues into october as well where we see strong ridging as well and pretty weak ridging relative to what's up north right around the main development region so i do expect a uh quite a bit amount of storms to move west enough to where they could be an imminent threat to the united states so based on this we could assume that the united states would experience more landfalls than usual which would definitely be a major concern but of course we need to take this with a grain of salt because going into october 2022 that's seven months from now and of course a lot could change from now until seven months so we definitely need to pay close attention to the cfs model over the next several months because it's definitely uh, it's definitely subject to change and there is maybe that possibility that there might be um there might not be ridging as strong so we might see more fish storms in this hurricane season but we need to wait and see and as of right now I'll say that it's more likely that we're going to see strong ridging build throughout the northern Atlantic, which will force a lot of storms for westward, which would enhance the risk of tropical cyclone landfalls in the United States. But 
um it's still subject to change so we need to see if that maintains but as of now it's expected it's more likely that we're going to experience more tropical cyclone landfalls in the united states if this forecast continues so if another thing i want to show you guys is sea surf temperatures and all uh the sea surf temperature anomaly and you're probably wondering what does sea surf temperature anomaly have to do with the exact track of tropical cyclones and do they enhance and what enhances the risk of uh, United States landfall based on sea surf temperatures because of course sea surf temperatures not necessarily directly manipulate the direction of where tropical cyclones form how I mean where tropical cyclones go however it does have pretty major indirect effects because for one thing is that of course if you're in an area where sea surf temperatures are warmer than average, there's going to be more of uh, upward motion in the atmosphere where the sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average. And you see that's going on here in the Western Atlantic and extending the Gulf of Mexico as well. And as a result of a stronger upward motion with the air molecules and more buoyancy with the air mass located in this region, there's more likely to we're more likely to see convection and enough convection for more um tropical cyclones will form closer to the united states since the sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average as of right now and it's expected to continue into the hurricane season but another thing what sea surf temperatures do is that they sort of also manipulate where exactly ridging builds because of course when there's a high pressure system there's a lot of sinking air and high pressures typically can't be in an area where there's a strong upward motion in the atmosphere because of course then it wouldn't be considered a high pressure system since there isn't enough sinking air to warrant calling it a high pressure system so when we see a lot of lift in this area there's more likely of a chance that we won't see as much ridging where the sea surf temperatures are warmer than average and more likely we'll see the ridging shift to somewhere where the sea surf temperatures might be closer to average or below average where the air is able to sink a lot easier and you see that for a lot of the western atlantic there's uh there's a um based on the fact that there's warmer than average sea surf temperatures there was more likely than not going to be a lower there's going to be a lower air pressure overall in this area for a lot of the hurricane season, which will force the ridge, I'd say, to move a little bit further west, I mean, eastward um, than what it typically is because there's such a strong upward motion in this area with the atmosphere and the air molecules that there can't be a ridge developing in this area or a ridge as strong at least. So as a result, I do expect the ridge to shift somewhere where the sea surface temperatures are closer than average, more likely than not further eastward where you of course see that the sea surface temperatures are closer to average and in fact below average right now in the main development region. And while I do expect the sea surface temperatures to eventually warm up in the main development region and the eastern Atlantic, I do not necessarily expect it to warm up to a point where it's going to be warmer than this area where it's much warmer than average so as a result i do expect the ridge to be a little bit more eastward this hurricane season and you're probably asking well what does this mean if the bermuda ridge builds a little bit eastward then we're more likely to see tracks further northward and while that certainly might be good news um because that could mean more fish storms developing if that were the case what this also does is because, like I said, the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average in this region. We're more likely going to experience more tropical cyclones develop in this region. And I've been noticing an influx of tropical cyclones and a lot of subtropical cyclones develop in the northern Atlantic. Um, uh, um, for example, like um, Hurricane Henri developed quite um, far northward compared to what typically, where typically tropical cyclones develop in the main Deval region or the Caribbean. But um, there are other, also other tropical cyclones that have developed in the past well further northward over the past several hurricane seasons. So there could be more of an influx of tropical cyclones impacting the northern United States as a result. We, of course, saw it with 
um, Hurricane Henri last year, which made landfall right around, right around the border of Rhode Island and Connecticut. I was actually reporting there in New London, Connecticut when um, Hurricane Henri made landfall or Tropical Storm Henri made landfall, I should say. So we could see a little bit more tropical cyclones impact the east, the northeast coast as a result of the much warmer than average western, um, northwestern Atlantic temperatures. So, um, and another thing too is that um, we could see storms steer more further northward. So even if a decent amount of these storms will be fish storms, there could be several of those storms that could maybe come uncomfortably close to the northeast coast. While for most years, it's unlikely that you do experience many any sort of tropical cyclone impact along the northeast because of course the wind shear is typically um, too strong this far up north there might be that a higher possibility of a tropical cyclone moving closer to the northeast than what you'd typically expect as a result of these warmer than average sea temperatures forcing the ridge a little bit eastward which would steer storms northward quicker rather than further westward so and of course the warmer sea temperatures will allow for more tropical cyclones to develop further northward than usual so i do expect a little bit more storms um in the united in the northeast united states as a result and in terms of southeast i still do expect more storms than average because of course even if a lot of storms do move up northward the fact that there's going to be a uh, much um, more active than usual hurricane season. I do think that you guys are bound to experience more tropical cyclone activity right around the southeast coast as well. So I do believe all throughout the United um, the East Coast, you should expect a much more active than usual hur um, hurricane season when it comes to landfalls as well. Like I showed you in my hurricane season forecast, I won't go too in depth with how um with how this hurricane season will be active you could take a look at my previous video on my hurricane season outlook if you want to see more of the specific details on why this hurricane season will be more active but um long story short that we're gonna most likely experience a neutral to la nina phase warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the atlantic and work that and that will promote more um, instability throughout the Atlantic for more tropical cyclones to develop right around the Gulf of Mexico. So I do think the United States is bound to receive much more landfalls than usual this hurricane season as well of how active it is. Where And I do expect a decent amount of storms to move northward as well as well of the warmer than average northern Atlantic tep um, sea surface temperatures as well as a ridging that's going to move eastward which will steer storms further northward. Now to first make this forecast we need to compare it to what typically happens during each hurricane season or what um, when you should typically expect a landfalling hurricane within a 50 mile radius so you see that the areas that are most like uh, that um, experience the most hurricane landfalls are North Carolina Florida and the southern portion of Louisiana and the reason why these areas experience the most tropical cyclones is of course they pop out a lot which is easy for a lot of tropical cyclones to um, to impact those areas like North Carolina pops out quite a bit into the open Atlantic which means that tropical cyclones are far more likely um, to impact you guys directly so is southern Florida popping out right in the middle of the Atlantic and even Louisiana gets its fair share while it doesn't pop out necessarily a ton we do see a sort of pattern where a ridge develops right around the um, just off the coast of Georgia that sort of steers hurricanes from a southerly direction into Louisiana so it's a quite common area where tropical cyclones directly impact you guys but even in the areas where you do experience where you do experience the most hurricane landfalls you see that it typically happens maybe once every six or seven years for southern Florida this extends to North Carolina as well and Louisiana so um, in a given year, it's still a little bit, um, it's still unlikely that you do experience a landfalling hurricane, um, even in the most active areas. But, uh, but of course, this doesn't include tropical storms that make landfall, which are also impactful. And of course, hurricanes that brush, um, that sort of brush your area. So, um, so it doesn't include those because if it did, the chances would be much higher. But in terms of direct impacts, um, in terms of a direct landfall, you see the chances are a lot less, typically a lot less 
um, is unlikely during any given year. And you see for northward into New York City, it happens only maybe around an average of once every 20 years. So it doesn't, it do, it's very rare um, this far up north to experience a landfalling hurricane and even more rare towards Maine. Um, but you see that anywhere pretty much south of the North Carolina, Virginia border, it's actually a little bit more common with um, happening around five to 10 years or so a landfalling hurricane. But without further ado, let me show you guys my forecast based on this. So um, so this is my forecast of, um, of the probability of a hurricane making landfall within 50 miles of your location. So in Florida, I do expect that there's going to be a 20% chance of a tropical cyclone making landfall. It is a little bit higher than the, around the 15% chance you do experience, you typically experience a tropical cyclone. I do, um, I expect this as a result of warmer than average sea surface temperatures and an expected more active than usual hurricane season and then north carolina also increasing a chance from 15 percent to 20 percent chance of receiving a landfalling tropical cyclone this year i'm also predicting this for southern louisiana 15 percent for a lot of the gulf coast states again arise from 10 percent as a result of a more active than usual hurricane season and i did also raise a chance um throughout the northeast coast from five percent to more of a 10 percent chance because i do expect the weakness in the ridging along the western atlantic to steer storms further northward and of course the northern atlantic is experiencing sea surf temperatures much warmer than average so i do expect the chance all throughout the united states to be uh to increase Increase for a landfalling hurricane as a result of a more active than usual hurricane season. So um, this is my hurricane landfall outlook. So make sure, but keep in mind, make sure to take this with a big grain of salt. It's very difficult to forecast where exactly hurricanes make landfall, especially when we're talking about something months out. But um, this is my best guess in terms of what, you, um, of, in terms of the chances you experience a landfalling hurricane within. 50 miles from your locations, but make sure to take it with a grain of salt. If you want even more in-depth forecast with the probability of a hurricane making landfall within 50 miles from your location, just comment down below your location or area, and I'll make sure to give you guys more in-detail forecast regarding the probability of a hurricane making landfall within 50 miles from your location. So make sure to comment down below if you're interested. But anyways, guys, I think you guys watch. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of the content, and I hope you guys all have a great day.